having a wonderful day. Um, today's study is um, on the falling away. And uh, a lot of times um, you'll hear it taught or um, the message given that the falling away is uh, backsliders or those uh, not going to the church building anymore. Um, but I want to share a little bit of a different perspective with you. And I encourage you to get your notebook out and a pen so that you can write down the scripture that I'm going to give you and uh, that you study it for yourself, that you pray on it and um, see what you can make of it in the spirit. Um, so first, what we're going to do is learn our Hebrew word of the day or fall away. My lovely little chalkboard here. So the Hebrew word is Leopold. Yipul. Right to left Hebrew, the word is spelled Lamed, Yod, He, Wa, Lamed, to fall away. So, stick with me. This might be about a 20 minute video. I've got my notebook here, um, lots of scripture, and um, said, um, I want you to study this for yourself so um, that you can understand it. So, what is falling away? It could be to fall, be omitted, vanquished, conquer, to be inferior to, withdraw, diminish gradually. Worldwide judgment is to come, but not until two things happen. Yesha Yahu, which is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6. Howl, for the day of Yahuwah is near. It comes as a destruction from El Shaddai. Obed Yah, which is Obadiah, chapter 1 verse 15 for the day of Yahuwah is near upon all the Gentiles as you have done it shall be done to you your reward shall come back on your head so what I believe is started when those um, started sharing the message of the world rather than sticking to Yahuwah's word Yahuwah allowed this to happen as a test to see who would follow corrupt leadership or stick to his truth we think of the separation of the wheat and the tares. The church or religious system started to form denominations or individual groups based on whatever they felt like teaching. There is one small remnant who has remained faithful and continues to keep the core instructions that Yahuwah instilled. In Yesha Yahu, Isaiah chapter six, verse three through four, Whoever slaughters the bull slays a man. Whoever breaks a dog's neck. Whoever brings a grain offering of pig's blood. Whoever burns incense, barak, blesses an idol. Indeed, they have chosen their own ways and their being delights in their abominations. I shall also choose their punishments and bring their fears on him. Because I called, but no one answered. I spoke and they did not hear. And they did evil before my eyes and chose what was displeasing to me. Yahu, Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 10 Thus said Yahuwah to his people, to this people So they have loved to wander, they have not restrained their feet Therefore Yahuwah has not accepted them Now he remembers their wickedness and punishes their sins So we think of the one or the man of lawlessness, right? Without law they perish because they refuse to love the truth and they abandon the truth. So I'm going to start in the Apocrypha books. And this is in no way, like I always say, a complete study because that would um, take a long time to do. But um, just a few scripture here to kind of go along with that and to pull it all together. Um, I like to read the Apocrypha books because they were originally included. Um, even in the King James in the 1600s, but then they were removed in the 1600s. So um, there's a lot of good information there in them. So the first is gonna be Tobit chapter 11, verse seven through nine. And a little bit of a backstory on that uh, before I read the verses is um, the messenger instructed Tobit or Tobias to cut a fish and to take the heart, the liver, and the gall and put them up. If touching the heart and the liver, 
the devil or an evil spirit, um, if there's any trouble, they can make a perfume of this before the man or woman and he would be no more vexed. As for the gall, anoint a man that has uh, whiteness in his eyes and he shall be healed. If the spirit smells, he will flee and never come again. So I thought that was very interesting. Fish stink. <laughs> okay, so continuing. Then said Raphael, I know Tobias that your father shall receive his sight. Therefore anoint his eyes with the gall and being pricked therewith, he shall rub and make the whiteness to fall away and shall see thee. Then Anna ran forth and fell on the neck of her son and said unto him, seeing I have seen thee, my son, from henceforth, I am content to die. And they both wept. So Tobias um, stops at the door and he goes on to sprinkle the gall on his father's eyes with the gall and his eyes began to prick and he rubbed them and the whiteness peeled away from the corner of his eyes and he praised the Almighty. So when we think of that, his eyes were anointed with gall of a fish. Well, we know a fish represents noon, which is the father, right? Um, or sprouting seed. And uh, when he rubbed that on, he, when he peeled it away, he could see like that blindness was removed right when we think about spiritual blindness when we apply him to our heart and soul and remove all that um, spiritual blindness uh, ecclesiasticus chapter 19 verses 1 through 2 a laboring man that is given to drunkenness shall not be rich and he that overcomes small things shall fall little by little wine and women lead wise men out of the way and put men of understanding to reproof and he that companieth adulterers shall become impudent rottenness and worms shall have him to heritage and he that is too bold shall be taken away and be made a public example so these are kind of given they're leading up to you um, to the falling away and explaining because um, they didn't want to follow the commandments or I like to refer to him as the instructions, right? And Emmanuel, um, Emmanuel, be with us. Emmanuel, an instruction to follow, an example of righteousness. So, um, and not only uh, adulterers as far as like your earthly spouse, but adultery um, on your husband, the bridegroom, um, and our father, our creator, that's uh, worshiping other gods and idols and deities and any abominations that are um, associated with them. The wisdom of Solomon chapter three, verses 15 through 16, for glorious is the fruit of laborers and the root of wisdom that shall never fade away. But the children of adulterers shall not be partakers of holy things and the seed of the wicked bid shall be rooted out. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. For the hope of the ungodly is like the dust that is blown away with the wind, and like a thin foam that is scattered abroad with a storm, and as smoke which is dispersed with the wind, and as the remembrance of him passeth that tarries but for a day. But the righteous shall live forever. Their reward also is with Yahuwah, and the Most High has care of him, of them. In Maccabees 1, chapter 2, verse 18 through 21, this is um, talking about where the Gentiles had defiled the sanctuary or the temple. Come thou therefore first and fulfill the king's commandment. And this was like the king as the um, earthly king over that kingdom. As all the heathen have done, and also the men of Yehuda, and such as remain at Yerushalayim, which is Jerusalem. So shall you and your family be in the king's favor and your children shall be enriched with silver and gold and with many rewards, right? So they wanted to give all those earthly rewards for obeying the king's command. Then Matathias answered and said with a loud voice, though all nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away every man from the religion of their fathers and consent to his commandments, yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Elohim, be merciful unto us that we forsake not the law and the ordinances. So they refused to sacrifice to idols. Mattathias had a zeal for holding to the instruction of Elohim. 
uh, they are slain because um, they would not fight on the Sabbath day. Matathias, when he's dying, commands his sons to stick by the words of Elohim after the examples of the fathers. In Baruch, which is the epistle of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 54 through 56, when there falls a fire upon the house of those gods of wood and of silver and of gold, the priests will escape and save themselves, but they burn as the blocks therein. They cannot withstand any king or enemies. How can it be thought or said that they be gods? Moreover, these gods of wood and gold and silver can neither defend themselves from thieves nor robbers. Moving on into some uh, renewed covenant scripture. Um, these are not in order, but I'm just going to read along. And like I said, write them down so you can go back and study for yourself. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. As to the coming of our Adon, Master, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah, and our gathering together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter. As if from us, as if the day of Yahuwah has come, let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim or that is worshiped so that he sets his Elohim in the Mishkan of Elohim showing himself that he is Elohim. Hebrews chapter 6 or chapter 3, 12 through 19 um, where it's talking about to look out brothers lest there be in any of you a wicked heart of unbelief and the falling away from the living Elohim. Then we go to chapter 6 verse 4 through 6 for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the gift of the Shamayim which is heaven and have become partakers of Ruha, Hokadesh, which is the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of Yahuwah and the powers of the age to come and fall away, to renew them again to repentance, having impelled for themselves the bin of Yahuwah again and put him to open shame. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse three. But I am afraid, lest as the serpent deceived Hawa, which is Eve, by his trickery, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Mashiach, Messiah. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 through 5. This is speaking about the um, church of Ephesus, or the assembly of Ephesus. But I hold this against you, that you have left your first love. So remember from where you have fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I shall come to you speedily and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. So our call to repentance, right? So to leave those doctrines, study his whole word, right? Absorb it, understand it, apply it, show others, um, and, and leave all of those abominations, those things that he clearly tells us in scripture, if we take the time to study it, that we're to abstain from, or the things that he blesses that we can enjoy, right? It's not for our, um, to make our lives miserable. He does this because he loves us and we have to have some instruction. Like you love your children, right? You have rules for your children that you want them to follow. You don't just say, okay, little Billy, go run out in the street and do whatever. No, you're gonna tell him, hey, don't play out in the street because you could get hit by a car. Or if you go out in the street, I'm gonna be standing there watching you and you're gonna wear a helmet and whatever and whatever, right? And it goes on. So now I'm babbling. So <laughs> continuing Romans chapter 11, verse 19 through 22. You shall say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Good, by unbelief they were broken off, and you stand by belief. Do not be arrogant, but revere. For if Elohim did not spare the natural branches, he might not spare you either. See then the kindness and sharpness of Elohim on those who fell sharpness, but toward you kindness otherwise you shall be cut off. First Timothy 4, 1-2 But the Ruha, spirit, set apart spirit, 
distinctly says that in latter times some shall fall away from the belief, paying attention to misleading spirits and teaching of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having them branded in their own conscience. Verse 16. Pay attention to yourself and to the teaching. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and those who hear you. 1 John 5 through 3. Um, I didn't write the scripture down, but um, is to know the truth, but refuse to obey it. Second Esdras, chapter 12, verse 17 through 18. And then chapter 13, I didn't uh, write chapter 13, but as for the voice that you heard speak, and that you shall not go out from the heads, but from the midst of the body thereof. This is the interpretation, that after the time of that kingdom, there shall arise great strife, and it shall endanger to fall but it shall not then fall but shall be restored again to his beginning Hazan, which is revelation chapter 3 verse 15 through 20 this is to the assembly of ladokia which is ladosia i know your works that you are neither hot nor cold i would that you were cold or hot so because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot i am going to vomit you out of my mouth Ugh. Because you say, rich am I, and I am made rich, and need none at all, and do not know that you are wretched, and pitiable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so that you become rich, and white garments, so that you become dressed, so that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown, and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see as many as I love I reprove and discipline so be ardent and repent see I stand at the door and I knock stand at the door dialect knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I shall come into him right in here pitch our tent in here in our temple our sanctuary and dine with him and him with me in um, an addition to Esther, chapter 4, verse 4, declared unto us that in all the nations there was scattered abroad a rebellious people that had laws contrary to all people and have always despised the commandments of the kings, of kings. And so that this general empire that we have begun cannot be governed without offense. Seeing now we perceive that this people alone are altogether contrary unto every man using strange and other manner of laws and having an evil opinion of our doings and go about to establish wicked matters that our kingdom should not come to good estate. Kepha, which is Peter, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20 through 22. For if they have escaped the defilements of the Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the first, for it would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the Kodesh command delivered unto them. For them, the proverb has proved true. A dog returns to his own vomit and a washed sow or pig to her rolling in the mud. Matithyahu, which is Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 through 13, and then many shall stumble, and they shall deliver up one another, and they shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, there again, there's lawlessness. The love of many shall become cold, but he shall have endured till the end, shall be saved. Jacob, which is James, chapter 1, verse 12, Baruch means blessed is the man who endures trial for when he has been proved he shall receive the crown of ha which is life which the adon master has promised to those who love him um, chapter 5 verse 19 through 20 brothers if anyone among you goes astray from the truth and someone turns him back let him know that he who turns a sinner from the strain of his way shall save a life from death and cover a great number of sins 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I treat my body severely, 
and I make it my slave, lest having proclaimed to others, I myself might be rejected. And the last scripture I'm going to read from is Hisson, Hisson, which is Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. See, I am coming speedily. Hold what you have, that no one take your crown. So as we go through and we see from the first covenant through the Apocrypha, which was in the middle of the first covenant and renewed covenant, if you say, um, and into the renewed covenant that it's because they um, left the father's instructions, his commands, his laws, and uh, <laughs> did their own, right? Um, and that the kings wanted them to obey their laws, uh, but many gave up their lives because they didn't want to, um, that they weren't going to proclaim that false um, doctrine or those laws because they were made of man, but they were going to follow the covenant of their fathers and of our creator. So my message to you, and I say this in all love, okay, no matter what you think, um, I'm telling you, it's never too late to turn back and repent, okay? My people perish for the lack of knowledge, and I feel like uh, Father has me sharing these messages um, for a reason that he would come out of her, come out of her, my people. Quit celebrating the pagan festivals, okay? You might say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not pagan or whatever. We know what we're doing it for. It's still a part of it. And that's not what... Um, that's not what he had in mind for us. We are to delight in his appointed Kodesh gatherings. He clearly gives us in scripture the times to celebrate those and they should be met with joy and with love, not with, oh, that was in the old time, that was for the Jews. You gotta get out of that mind frame and really understand it in the spirit. Quit bringing his name to naught. His name was removed from the scriptures about 7,000 times. So if we're calling upon the name, call upon my name and you shall be saved, which is a continuous process of salvation, right? But who do we know that we're calling on? We can't just call him a generic big G God, okay? He has a name, he has a name, and his son has a name that came to die for our sins. He was the ultimate sacrifice, and he still followed his father's instructions Quit eating pork. I know that's gonna hurt some feelings there. And all the other abominable foods. Okay, it might taste good to you, I understand, but there's a reason that he tells us not to eat these things. There are lots of other things that we can eat that are good for us. Honor his Sabbath, okay? That's the seal between him and his people, honoring his Sabbath and his rest day. I pray that this message doesn't fall on deaf ears, but that it blesses the listener. May you have a wonderful weekend, and I hope that um, the study helped you. Pray, seek, knock, study, and um, come out of her. Shalom.